Imagine that you are standing in an ancient, quiet forest where every tree and plant seems to stand in hushed anticipation. In the cool, still air, you suddenly notice a single leaf trembling. It's not moved by the wind, but by something deeper, a vibration running through the ground itself, heralding a change. This forest is our world, and that vibrating leaf, it's like the coming solar eclipse of April 8th, 2024. Just as the leaf signals a shift in the unseen depths, so too does this eclipse signify a profound shift in the spiritual landscape. Yes, for some of us, the solar eclipse is merely a fleeting marvel or an ordinary natural event. It may be dismissed as a mere astronomical occurrence. However, for those with spiritual insight, it represents a momentous shift, a divine signal of change in the spiritual realm that invites us to look beyond the temporal and into the eternal narrative that is being woven by our Creator. Today, I will uncover the layers of meaning behind the solar eclipse of 2024, a phenomenon that intertwines celestial movements with biblical prophecy. I'm also going to pray a powerful prayer with you in the mighty name of Jesus. So watch until the end and open your hearts to receive the blessings of this prayer. My friends, since the beginning of time, God has communicated with humanity through the patterns and events in the sky. As we turn to Genesis 1, verse 14, we're reminded that God placed lights in the sky, not only to illuminate, but also to signal divine appointments. The scripture tells us, Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons, and for days and years. Here, the word seasons is not a reference to our four annual quarters of spring, summer, fall, or winter. Instead, it is a reference to God's appointed times, a schedule of holy significance. Indeed, these celestial signs have been present at pivotal moments throughout history serving as harbingers of monumental shifts. Consider the words of Luke 21, verse 25, where it speaks of signs in the sun, moon, and stars, and how upon the earth nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and tossing of the sea. Such events in the heavens are not merely for our wonder, but for our awareness guiding us to understand the deeper meanings behind these cosmic occurrences. My friends, let us seek to understand the significance of this event through the lens of the Bible, the connection between celestial occurrences and prophetic events brings light to God's mastery over creation and time. Solar eclipses are mentioned throughout the scripture, often in the context of impending change or judgment. For instance, Amos 8, verse 9 states, And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord God, that I will make the sun go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in broad daylight. This passage makes clear reference to an eclipse, symbolizing God's sovereignty over nature, and a reminder of His presence in the midst of human history. It alerts us to the fact that God intervenes in the world in significant ways, urging us to take heed and prepare for His divine actions. Therefore, we need to understand that this eclipse is not merely a natural spectacle. It holds a mirror to the past and a window to the future, framed by the Word of God. It is a divine marker, signaling significant shifts and fulfilling ancient prophecies. Let's proceed by examining the intricacies of God's calendar. 
which differs vastly from our modern-day Gregorian calendar. The biblical calendar is not merely a way to mark time, but a divine instrument tuned to the rhythm of prophecy and redemption. To gain further insight, let's turn to the book of Leviticus, where chapter 23 introduces us to God's appointed times. These appointed times, or mudim, are sacred appointments between God and humanity, designed for remembrance and worship, each with prophetic significance. In Leviticus 23, verse 2, the Lord speaks to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, The feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations. These are my feasts. My friends, understand that it's crucial for believers to understand the significance of these feasts, especially as we seek to interpret the signs of the times in light of biblical prophecy. These feasts include Passover, commemorating liberation from bondage, and the Feast of Tabernacles, celebrating God's provision and presence. Besides Passover and Feast of Tabernacles, the biblical calendar also features the Feast of Unleavened Bread, highlighting purity and haste in leaving Egypt. There is also the Feast of First Fruits, celebrating the initial harvest, pointing to Christ's resurrection. Also, there is the Pentecost, commemorating the giving of the Torah and the descent of the Holy Spirit. Then there is the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, calling for reflection and repentance and the Day of Atonement or Yom Kippur, a solemn time for atonement and reconciliation with God. These feasts collectively underscore the narrative of liberation, provision, repentance, and divine presence in the journey of faith. They frame the past deliverances and future fulfillments of God's plan for humanity. The solar eclipse, as a sign in the heavens, falls into this divine structure of timekeeping, acting as a celestial harbinger that calls our attention to God's unfolding plan. As we think about the coming eclipse, we cannot help but reflect on past events where darkness fell upon the earth during critical moments in biblical history. The crucifixion of Jesus, for instance, was marked by darkness covering the land an event documented in Matthew 27, verse 45, which reads, Now, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. This alignment of a natural phenomenon with a moment of profound spiritual significance illustrates the harmony between heaven and earth in God's orchestration of redemption. Now, let us also consider the Gog-Magog War and its possible connection with this 2024 solar eclipse. This prophetic battle was mentioned in the book of Ezekiel. The Gog-Magog War is described as a pivotal conflict involving nations from the north descending upon Israel in the end times. The occurrence of rare solar eclipses in our time, including the one set for 2024, may well be the celestial signals that align with these times of warfare and change. When we consider the Gog-Magog War in light of this, we see a pattern emerging. Celestial signs often accompany times of great change or turmoil. As we gaze into the prophetic scriptures, like Ezekiel 38 and 39, which detail this end-time conflict, we are reminded that God's signals in the heavens are not random, but are part of a divine strategy to alert His people. These signs urge us to take action, engage in prayer, and prepare ourselves spiritually. Interestingly, these elements form the acronym AP. So, just as we live in an era dominated by digital applications or apps. Let's embrace the spiritual app, action, prayer, 
and preparation, reminding us to actively respond to God's call in these times. As we continue to watch and pray, we remember the words in 2 Peter 3, verse 8, where we're reminded that with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord's perception of time invites us to consider the broader picture of God's eternal plan. Just as the Israelites were to observe the signs and seasons, so too must we discern the times we live in. In this context, the solar eclipse of 2024 is not an isolated celestial event, but a piece in a larger prophetic puzzle. As we navigate through these times, we draw upon the wisdom of Scripture to guide our understanding. Let us take heed of the lessons learned from biblical history and prophecy, using them as a lens to interpret the signs of our times, including the upcoming eclipse. Now, consider the book of Joel, which provides a stark portrayal of the day of the Lord, a time of darkness, both literal and spiritual. Joel 2, verse 31 tells us, The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. This prophetic utterance also underscores the dual role of solar and lunar eclipses as harbingers of God's sovereign intervention in human affairs. In other words, it highlights the cosmic signs that precede significant divine interventions, urging us to remain vigilant and prepared for the unfolding of God's redemptive plan. In times past, during an eclipse, people often experienced a deep sense of wonder and fear, recognizing the extraordinary power and mystery of God. This profound reaction to the breathtaking spectacle of an eclipse is likely to be shared by many today, bridging the gap across time with those ancient observers in a shared sense of astonishment and reverence. Now, this reaction was not born out of superstition, but stemmed from an understanding that such phenomena were messages from God. In Luke 21, verse 11, Jesus himself speaks of great signs from heaven among the indicators of his return. The darkening of the sun is then a celestial signal, a pause in the heavens, calling all creation to attention. To discern the message behind these cosmic signs, we turn to the patterns laid out in Scripture. Biblical accounts often link eclipses with pivotal moments of judgment or deliverance. The ninth plague of darkness over Egypt, described in Exodus 10, verses 21 to 23, brought a tangible darkness that could be felt, a precursor to the deliverance of Israel. In a similar vein, the solar eclipse serves as a physical manifestation of spiritual realities, a tangible reminder of the invisible truths that govern our existence. The path of the 2024 eclipse across the United States has stirred much contemplation and speculation. This path, intersecting with the 2017 eclipse, forms a giant X over the nation. Some interpret the X, formed by the eclipse paths as a prophetic sign and a mark of divine significance. The intersection point, known as Little Egypt, a region in the United States with historical ties to ancient civilizations, serves as a focal point in this interpretation. This area, symbolically linked to Jesus, the Prince of Peace, is thought to emphasize a message of reconciliation and divine presence. My friends, let such an intersection prompt us to reflect on Isaiah 55, verse 6, which urges us to seek the Lord while he may be found call upon him while he is near. In my opinion, these celestial crosses in the sky can be viewed as a call to a nation to seek repentance and return to the ways of the Lord. Furthermore, 
the eclipse's trajectory through various cities in the United States named Salem, a name derived from Shalom, meaning peace, invokes the presence of Christ, the Prince of Peace. This symbolism is reminiscent of Hebrews 7, verse 2, which refers to Melchizedek, the king of Salem, as the king of peace. So, the journey of the eclipse through places bearing this name could be seen as a signpost pointing toward the need for spiritual peace and reconciliation. As we observe the movements of the heavens, we must not become passive spectators, but active participants in God's redemptive history. The Apostle Paul in Romans 13, verse 11, exhorts believers to awaken from slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. My friends, the eclipse is yet another wake-up call, a reminder to live in a manner worthy of our calling, vigilant and prepared for the Lord's coming. In the same breath, we recall the story of the wise and foolish virgins in Matthew 25, verses 1 to 13. The wise virgins, with their lamps filled with oil, were ready for the bridegroom's arrival. In contrast, the foolish were unprepared, their lamps empty. The 2024 solar eclipse challenges us to be like the wise virgins, filled with the Spirit and ready for the return of Christ, our Bridegroom. Yet, we must approach these signs with a spirit of discernment. While some may be tempted to interpret every celestial event as a prophetic milestone, we are reminded in 1 John 4, verse 1, to test the spirits to see whether they are from God. It is crucial to seek the Holy Spirit's guidance to understand the times and not be led astray by every wind of doctrine or speculation. We are called to look beyond the physical explanations and see the spiritual dimension. Just as Jesus taught in parables, using everyday occurrences to convey deeper truths, so, too, can we discern spiritual lessons in natural phenomena. The solar eclipse invites us to reflect on our spiritual state, to consider whether we are living in the light of Christ or in the shadow of worldly concerns. It's a moment to consider our ways, to evaluate our paths, and to seek a closer walk with God. As we stand in the awe, inspiring shadow of the eclipse, let us lift our eyes to the heavens and our hearts to the Lord, seeking God's face and His will for our lives. Let us ponder the words of Psalm 19, verse 1, which says, The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. My friends, the upcoming solar eclipse is yet another verse in the celestial psalm of creation, a testament to the majesty and mystery of our Creator. So, as we turn our gaze skyward to the impending eclipse, we should consider it as a divine appointment, a scheduled moment in which heaven intersects with earth. In this celestial event, we are invited to witness a physical manifestation of God's timing and purpose a reminder that He orchestrates the universe in a dance of divine precision and significance. In the heart of every believer, there should be an expectation that God is actively involved in the affairs of humanity and that He uses the celestial bodies as instruments for His purposes. The psalmist declared in Psalm 104, verse 19, He appointed the moon for seasons, the sun knows it's going down. This verse reveals that the movements of the celestial bodies are not random. They are divinely appointed for signs and for seasons, for days and years. As we examine the profound timing of the 2024 solar eclipse, 
It is intriguing to draw parallels with significant events in the Bible where darkness played a crucial role. As mentioned earlier, we cannot overlook the three hours of darkness that covered the land during the crucifixion of Jesus, a moment that marked the turning point of human history. Here, darkness was not merely a backdrop, but a spiritual signal that something monumental was taking place. The solar eclipse serves as a modern-day parallel, prompting us to look beyond the natural occurrence and seek its spiritual significance. This is supported by Revelation 8, verse 12, which speaks of a third of the sun being struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. While this verse speaks of future tribulation, it also underscores the use of celestial phenomena as metaphors for larger events. In our contemporary context, the eclipse can be viewed as a cosmic pause, an opportunity for introspection and spiritual realignment. It invites us to silence the noise of our daily lives and reflect on our place in God's grand narrative. It's a moment to consider the words of Lamentations 3, verse 40, which says, Let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. This appointed time should not be taken lightly. Historically, eclipses have often been associated with changes in leadership or direction for nations. As such, this celestial event may herald a period of transformation for individuals and communities alike. It calls to mind the story of King Hezekiah, who in 2 Kings 20 verses 8 to 11 asked for a sign and witnessed the shadow on the sundial go back 10 steps. A sign of God's promise and intervention. As the eclipse traverses the land, it metaphorically touches each area, inviting a collective and individual response. It is reminiscent of the words spoken by God in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 14. He said, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. My friends, the eclipse can be a catalyst for this humble seeking and turning. Furthermore, the eclipse's path invites us to consider our mission and purpose, just as Jonah was called to Nineveh to deliver a message of repentance. We too are called to be messengers in our times, to share the light of Christ, even when shadows fall. Jonah's story, found in the book, bearing his name, demonstrates that God's desire is for repentance and restoration, not judgment and destruction. We can also find comfort in knowing that, even when darkness seems to prevail, God's promises remain steadfast. The book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 20, assures us that your sun shall no longer go down, nor shall your moon withdraw itself, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your mourning shall be ended. The temporary shadow cast by an eclipse also serves as a reminder that any present darkness we experience will ultimately give way to his eternal light. In anticipation of the eclipse, let us embrace this opportunity to commit to deeper communion with God, to seek his guidance, and to stand firm in our faith. It is a time to echo the prayer of David in Psalm 51, verse 10, saying, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. As we await the eclipse, let us remember that God's creation is a testament to His glory and a canvas for His messages. May we, like the wise men of old who followed a star, be attentive to the signs in the heavens and discerning of their significance. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. 
I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God, almighty and everlasting Father, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Sovereign Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who is and who was and who is to come. In your unchangeable nature, I find my steadfast hope, and I rest in the assurance that from the first light of creation to the final eclipse, your purposes are being fulfilled. Lord, I exalt your name above all. You who set the stars in place and command the sun to shine, your works are perfect, and I trust your timing. I praise you, Lord, for your glory shines brighter than the sun. You are worthy of all honor, for in your hands are the times and seasons, and you use the heavens to declare your mighty works. I thank you, Father, for the countless blessings you have poured upon me and my loved ones. I thank you for the gift of life. Merciful Lord, I come before you seeking forgiveness for my sins. As you forgive me, I also extend forgiveness to those who have wronged me. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, I stand in awe of your cosmic display in the heavens, a testament to your sovereignty. As the moon covers the sun, let not my heart be shadowed by fear or doubt. I rebuke every power of darkness and every scheme meant to sow confusion or lead me astray. Lord, I claim your peace, which surpasses all understanding. By the authority of your word, I proclaim victory over every challenge and trial. I declare healing over my body, mind, and spirit, for you are the God who heals us. In the name of Jesus, I claim protection against the attacks of the enemy, standing firm in the promise that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I pray for your blessings to flow in my life and the lives of my loved ones, for health to be restored, for strength to be renewed, and for joy to fill our hearts. Lord, as I say this prayer, together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking that the lessons of the eclipse stir us to readiness and to an anticipation of your return. We stand united, asking that you guide us in your wisdom, that we might understand the times and know how to live as children of light in this world. Lord, bless us and our loved ones with the fullness of your peace. We pray for peace in Israel, across the world, and within our homes and communities, that your comforting presence may bring unity healing and harmony to all. May your healing hand touch every area of our lives that needs your tender care. Protect us from the wiles of the enemy. And as we witness the eclipse, help us to prepare our hearts and spirits for the day that we will meet you face to face. Let your kingdom come on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray, amen. If you were blessed by this message, type the word amen in the comment section below. I declare that all the blessings of this prayer are now upon you. In the name of Jesus, you can help us to reach more persons and spread the gospel. 
You can do this by sharing the video with a friend or family member who you know needs the blessing of this prayer and by clicking the like button. Also remember to subscribe to the channel for more videos that will bless your heart and uplift your spirit. We appreciate all those who support us. You're blessed to be a blessing. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those that are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer, I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. I then encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comments section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.